Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics, a podcast dedicated to exploring how things get places and the people who get them there. We'll talk with logistics and supply chain leaders about innovation, industry trends, and the future of the logistics business. Now, here's your host, Joe Lynch. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics podcast. My name is Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's topic is smart freight sourcing with my friend, Andy Semish. How's it going, Andy? Hey, Joe. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me on Logistics of Logistics. Things are good. Thank you so much for coming on. Andy has been there, done that, got the hat. We had a long talk the other day, and uh, I'm excited to hear from him on the podcast. Uh, so stick around. Um, Andy, please introduce yourself and your company and where you're calling from today. Joe, um, my name is Andy Semish. I have uh, been with Emerge for 15 months. I currently live and work in uh, Richmond, Virginia. You, you, nice area. So, uh, what, what, what do you do over at Emerge? Well, commercial development is uh, things that fall off the off the beaten path. I, I don't primarily work with shippers or carriers, um, but based on um, my past experience, I have strong relationships with both shippers and carriers, and I typically deal with. Um, LTL providers and other large types of uh, um, shippers that need procurement capacity and solutions. Yep. Um, I've had people on my my podcast from Emerge. I love what you guys are doing. So I'm going to give my layman's, my layman view of what you guys do. And then I want to hear your two cents on it. So I think everybody says, oh, I have a TMS. I don't need, I, I have this, I have that. What they typically don't have is an RFP tool of any sort. They they, and so they're trying to find capacity and they're trying to see what the market's doing, but they don't have a tool for it. And there's there's tools out there, and I won't mention them, but uh, they aren't made for our industry. They're made for other procurement. They're made for buying nuts and bolts. And buying nuts and bolts is a lot different than buying um, freight. And so we're, when we're talking about smart freight sourcing, which we'll do today, uh, that, I think that's what you guys do over there, right? Yeah. Yes, Joe. So, you know, smart freight sourcing starts with, um, you know, a, a, a very strong uh, platform. And the Merge Dynamic RFP platform is our signature product. Um, it enables shippers and carriers to make more empowered strategic decisions and save time and money. It's the first web-based uh, procurement to- tool made exclusively for the transportation industry. Excellent. So um, tell us a little bit about you. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Tell us what you did before you joined Emerge 15 months ago. Yeah, sure will. Um, I grew up uh, outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, um, and I started to work for UPS uh, when I went to college. Um, I worked 36 years at UPS uh, doing... Woo! Yeah, yeah, long career, great career, and uh, now I get the opportunity to be here to merge. I, uh, you know, starting work. I started working like many uh, long-term UPSers do uh, by handling packages. Became a driver, uh, fulfilled many management positions in the operations and engineering group, um, and then retired as a VP of transportation at UPS Freight. That's a that's one of the juggernauts. So I know you learned a thing or two. <laughs> um, so, so uh, what did you study in school? Uh, well, I was a business major in economics and marketing. Um, and but Real. I where'd you go? I went to Temple University. Um, oh, yeah, that's a top school. Yeah, top school, Temple University in, in Philadelphia. And I know I'm going to have some haters out there. I'm an Eagles fan. Yeah, I think people are afraid <laughs> of Eagle fans. <laughs> anyway, um, so. Uh, you joined what so you had a, a long career at UPS when you left you had opportunities you could have gone a lot of different places why did you cho- choose emerge it's a fabulous business i'd been exposed to it a little bit uh during my career and thought that it just had so much opportunity um emerge is um the only um as i said web based platform out there for the transportation industry i spent many years trying to drive my transportation costs uh yeah who does in it? a positive direction reduce the cost and um I, I think that this i know that this tool that we have is going to revolutionize and change the entire transportation industry for both shippers and carriers you know when i think about freight procurement 
and I, I can t- I can put my 3PL hat on. When I was at a little 3PL, we would send, uh, we would say, hey, we got a new opportunity here. We would take an Excel spreadsheet with all the lanes in it, say I need this to go from point A to point B, and then I would put it in an Excel spreadsheet, and I would have um, how many times a week, right? And then I would send that Excel spreadsheet out to everybody's, uh, every carrier I knew. Didn't matter if they specialized in the Northeast, my stuff was for the out West, just email blast, right? And a whole bunch of those emails would bounce. <laughs> and a whole bunch of these people would ignore me and I don't blame them. And that was, I think still a lot of companies are using email blasts with Excel spreadsheets. And in this day and age, if you're managing your supply chain or your freight procurement using uh, Excel spreadsheets or Google Docs, you, you're you're off track. <laughs> so it's it's the the world has changed, and they, and you guys have a custom built, I mean a purpose built solution for RFP. Yeah, so if you think about when we used to do work in the Excel spreadsheets, and we still do, many most shippers actually still do work in Excel spreadsheets. But that was the early 1990s, and nothing has been developed um, for the freight procurement of transportation since then, until now, 2017, when uh, you know Andrew Leto uh, put started to put his vision in place. Yeah, and and by the way, the, Andrew and uh, his brother and his team started Global Trans, and they're uh, they're a juggernaut too. I mean, one of the top freight brokers, and he always he was on the podcast once, and he said. He always saw this as a big problem. How do we get, you know, how do we get everybody on the same platform? Yeah. So, Joe, you, you talk about the Excel spreadsheet. Um, you know, I have horror stories. You know, telling my wife I don't know when I'm going to be home uh, because, you know, we had to go through a whole bunch of data. Um, we would send out the lanes that we wanted to, you know, our carriers to bid on. Typically, it was only about thirty carriers. Um, tell them when the deadlines were due. If half of them met the deadlines, I think I would be surprised. So we were extending the deadlines. And then came the real difficult part. You had to, you know, analyze the data, make sure that you didn't tilt the scales in any one direction toward a carrier. Um, you made sure that they had the capacity to, um, you know, handle what you bid, handle what they bid on, right? And then, you know, uh, lastly, you had to award the, the 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 lanes. And again, all this is done through Excel, um, email gathering emails back, checking it off, printing it, archiving it. You know. Yeah. And, and by the way, if, if, if I'm one of those carriers also, and I get an email from Andy saying, hey, I don't know Andy very well, but I, I, I got this, I got thousands of lanes from him and he wants me to bid. And my first thought is, is he going to keep his incumbent carriers? Is he just market testing? Does he just want to make sure he's getting the right price from his guys that he knows and likes is that what he's doing to me? So, and then and then I will throw another thing out there. I have to at that point also. Am I going to go high, and, and then every time Andy says do it, I'll have capacity, or am I going to go low and win a lot of business, but then I turn turn away eventually? That, so so it's such a flawed way to do business. Yeah, and, well, you, you, you just point out that you know nobody knows how to really bid on some of the large you know four hundred lane bids or. You know, and some some of the shippers are putting out 1, 1,500 now. And after you send the Excel spreadsheet out, you just get bombarded by phone calls um, asking, you know, how do I win this? How do I keep this? Um, where should I bid? Um, and then you get their, you know, that carrier's perspective on where the market is and what they need. So after it's all said and done, you kind of, kind of, you have to weigh um, a lot of factors because you have had incumbents that do a great job. You are coming to the marketplace with a lot of volume. So volume is king and you only have a limited number of carriers. And if you've treated them right, they're going to bid. If they've had, you know, disruptions and, and you haven't honored the previous contract, they're probably going to scale back or, you know, depart from your, from your you know, RFP. And again, I don't think you're exactly building any bridges when you just send an email blast to somebody who talked to you six months ago and you had his business card. Um, 
you've, you, 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 there's a lot of distrust. The, 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 the technology or the lack thereof is a problem, but so is the idea that I spend so much time, and I've heard people say this, it could be eight weeks of collecting all your lanes, getting all those emails, and then you have one meeting with uh, maybe a large group of carriers or maybe it's one-on-one, and you said, I want to make sure I'm not biased, so I don't want to spend a, a little extra time with Andy and a little less time with Joe because that gives Andy an advantage. I don't think that's the way we want to. Sp- I think we want to spend our time letting the technology do that kind of work and spend more time actually having meetings with carriers and shippers so they can say, yeah, this is this is this is how I want to work. So, Joe, Emerge has streamlined this process. You take the current Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets that you're using. You upload them. Yeah. You, you, you know, you have 14 columns of information, origin, origin city, destination, destination, zip, lane name, et cetera. And you. We, we can customize your sheet to fit into our platform and actually upload it within minutes of, uh, of you giving us that spreadsheet and then starting the bid process. Yep. Yep. It, it's, it's a better way. And I want to talk about, I know we talked well, about if I, one more thing, if I could say you put your incumbent carriers in there, so it's the same carriers you're going to deal with. And then we're going to add the eMERGE carriers because we want to bid on your lanes because we feel as we have buying power. And then that bid will deliver a solution for you. Yeah. And so I should also mention you can use eMERGE. I know I learned this before. You can use the eMERGE platform for free and never once use an eMERGE carrier. But I think what you'll find out is <laughs> they've got a lot of carriers in that platform that you're going to want to use. Yeah, absolutely. But but they've created a, a a purpose-built RFP tool. So you can use it, upload those thousand, thousand lanes out of your Excel spreadsheet into that system, connect with all your all your carriers. And by the way, your carriers won't mind one bit because they're probably already on that platform given how much volume you guys are moving through the platform already. And as we get more large shippers, um, they bring on carriers, which it's a mushroom effect. So large shippers bring on carriers, carriers come back to our platform. And the carriers have the opportunity that once they're on our platform to go, you know, shopping in our marketplace, which is uh, another avenue to support the carriers. So I want to switch gears. I know there was a few topics I wanted to hit on related to this. So, again, we're talking smart freight sourcing with my friend Andy Andy Semish. Um, So in the olden days and maybe even today, volume was king. If I had tons of lanes and I know you were. At, at, at a juggernaut, you guys had lots of lanes that you could push out. Um, that was always the way you got the best pricing. You said, I've got, I got, I spend $50 million a year. I'm going to get really good pricing. And let's face it, sometimes shippers exaggerate that a little bit, right? Because uh, if I say 50, maybe that sounds a little more impactful than uh, 45 or 35, right? And when it never materializes, the shippers, I mean, the uh, carriers are never surprised by that, right? <laughs> it's, so first off, talk a little bit about the role of volume and what it, how, it, how it played in the past and how it plays today. Yeah. So, you know, the more volume it had, the more power you commanded and it brought carriers to you. So, you know, the, the volume was king. In today's environment, a volume shipper or in in the past, a volume shipper probably only had between 30 and 50 carriers. Today, a volume shipper will have their core 30 to 50 carriers, but is going to be um, get visibility to the you know couple thousand 50 or under under 50 truck companies out there that may have a niche in that market on that lane and the ability to provide a cheaper um, rate for that large shipper. So, you know, large shippers are going to still command a lot, but they're going to be expo- they're going to get the exposure to a lot of smaller carriers that uh, they had not in the past. Yep. Yep. And so in the olden days, we do that once a year, once a year RFP. And the reason we had to do that was it took four to eight weeks and it kind of bogged the whole team down. Uh, I don't think carriers particularly like it. I've heard the term bid fatigue because uh, they're, they're tired of having to having that, getting that clunky Excel spreadsheet from somebody they vaguely know. And, um, but now beyond volume, 
we have the ability to be more flexible about our RFP. So rather than doing an RFP um, once a year, a lot of companies, and I know companies working with Emerge tend to do them a lot more. They're doing them, and you correct me if I'm wrong, quarterly or even more often because it's not, it's not a cumbersome process anymore. The old clunky Excel spreadsheet, you didn't want to do that one more than once a year because it was so time consuming. But with the streamlined process, you guys are doing them a lot more. So talk about this idea of flexibility and the ability to do more, um, more bids. So, Joe, what we're seeing is um, well, our shippers in general are doing more bids. Um, you know, this market has changed significantly in the last three or three and a half years, multiple times. I mean, we went from, you know, uh, you know, the, Prior to the pandemic, we were, you know, starting to see some lower freight volumes. Uh, and then the pandemic hit. It quickly turned around where there was no capacity. And now it seems like things are softening up. So where do shippers um, see themselves in their rates? And uh, the dynamic RFP tool will allow you to run as many bids as you see fit in order to um, validate the your pricing on the lane. So, you know, we're seeing some shippers, you know, run a core bid and then come back with either um, a mini bid or a seasonal bid or, you know, specific lanes that they just want to see if the pricing has changed a little bit in those lanes. But, you know, it's so easy that you're definitely seeing more bids right now. And what we're also seeing is that, you know, where there's service problems out there, um, shippers are now expecting more uh, that things are softening and they're going to bid on those lanes where the carriers just aren't performing. You know, and Andy, you, you again, you've been this long career and you, you've got, you know, all that tribal knowledge and all the other experience and expertise. If I said, hey, Andy, you're smart, man. You tell me where rates will be one year from now. And, and you would say, oh, I don't hold me to this, but, right? Are we heading into a recession? Is COVID actually really over this time? Who's to know? I mean, so, so the problem we always have had with those one-year bids is when a guy like Andy can't tell you where the market's going in one year, and everybody has to make that guess. So somebody guesses high, somebody guesses low. We're all wrong. Nobody's exactly right on. So when I say... Andy, can you tell me what you think is going to happen in the next quarter? I think you feel a little more comfortable. And I think that's what we want to give our carriers and the shippers the chance to say, I don't want to miss the market, but I also don't want to, I also don't want to be underpaid for my work. So, um, you know, you know, my recommendation to the shippers is to gather as much data as possible. And along with the Emerge RFP tool, is the Emerge benchmarking, which goes hand in hand with it. And that will give you a detailed lane um, lane cost and rate uh, so that you can see whether you're paying above the market, at the market, or below the market, and then make the, make the decisions internally whether it's time to take those lanes where you're paying above the market and put those out for bid. Um, we will also, um, you know, support, uh, you know, those bids through the dynamic RFP tool. Yeah. And by the way, we talked about market testing your current um, carriers earlier. You don't have to drag everybody down this rat hole to do that now because because you can go on to Emerge, use it for free. And again, I, and, and market test your guys. But again, I do think most most people, once they start using the tool, go, yeah, here's the market, but also Emerge added three or four other carriers to the list here. Um, maybe I need to look at some of these guys, right? You know, one shipper said to me, you've introduced us to carriers that we didn't even know existed. And that's exactly what our goal is to do. And, you know, the second piece of that is to give you good information on when it's time for you to, you know, put an RFP out there and the data behind it. Well, it's it's the technology. I think they, this is one of the things I like about the whole idea of having a technology that streamlines the process. Is I'm I'm a big believer in long term relationships. I'm also uh, think you have to invest in 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 those relationships when you're doing um, when you're 
mired down with a whole bunch of Excel spreadsheets and sending out email blasts. You never really get to know anybody. You're just you're you're holding everybody at arm's length, which means you get arm's length relationships, and those are less than valuable. Anyway, we talked about volume, and again, the importance of it always been important, and it, it's still important. But I think now we talked a little bit about flexibility. The, the flexibility being, I can do more RFP events. And when COVID hit, a friend of mine called me and said, uh, "He's a shipper, large, very large shipper," and said, "Do you think I should go back and ask?" Um, ask everybody to rebid these lanes because I think rates are coming down. Well, that's what we all thought for a minute. And then rates skyrocketed, right? Um, and so we it, we can't really predict. <laughs> we can't predict. what's Are we getting a recession? Is the market going to be slow for a while? So now we have the flexibility to say, I can do I can do a bid for the next quarter or the next 10 weeks. If I'm moving Christmas trees, I say, I want to move Christmas trees for 10 weeks. I don't want last year's prices. Yeah. You know, it, it is. It, it provides a lot of flexibility. Um, it puts the, it aligns uh, um, shippers and car carriers to the current market conditions. And then it allows shippers and carriers to both react to the current market conditions. So, you know, if we're talking, you know, you know, pandemic, post pandemic, supply chain problems, potential recessions and things like that that's in the news, you know, they, they have the data at their fingertips and it's very flexible for them to uh, make changes. I love it. And by the way, most transportation management systems don't have this tool on there. So they you can go buy a very expensive one that's not made for this industry. Or you can say, I'm just going to connect. I'm going to I'm going to integrate with Emerge and have this tool. And there's just no reason not to, because, again, it's it's free. <laughs> Joe, you can, you know connect with us and emerge through many avenues and i'll go over those a little bit later but um you know the the tools are available for procurement of um tra of transportation are also available to procure other things you know office supplies and, and things of that nature this here is this rfp tool is only for transportation and uh, we're expanding modes each quarter um, so that eventually we will be a full transportation procurement platform. So we talked a little bit about volume. I know we wanted to talk about that. We talked a little bit about the flexibility. And it's a flexibility to uh, be able to do more bids, get away from that one, one, once a year bid that, that nobody ever gets right. We have a much better chance of getting right the, the 10 week or the, <laughs> the one quarter bid and um, people who are using Emerge, I know uh, we talked before we hit record, they're doing more RFPs because the process isn't awkward. It's not a pain in the ass. <laughs> so when you streamline that process, you go, hey, I'm going to do this all the time. I have some carriers that are dropping the ball. Let's rebid those lanes. Let's find some good carriers to get those straightened out. We also started to talk about visibility. So um, what is what is what is Emerge doing with in terms of visibility for me? Well, through this bid process, you have full visibility to the bid the bids that are going in and out of, in, into the platform. So, at, you know, the shipper can see the bids as they're coming in. They know the shippers already posted the you know deadline for the bid, and um, the carriers can also you know update their bids as necessary. Um, uh, you know, it's very suitable for operations, operations personnel to on both sides of the shipper and the carrier to, um, you know, make adjustments that bid process is going on. And and lastly, once that bid process is finished, um, I, I mentioned the benchmarking capabilities, but I also want to mention the scenario building. And the scenario building is, you know, how much did you award to, you know, specific carrier so you don't um you know tilt the scales to one carrier um how much did you how much did you award by market you know out of the northeast or southeast uh, and you've defined those markets and other type of scenarios that that are important to um you know the shipper to make sure that the bid executes like they want it to execute and as you change, as you tweak the scenarios, as you tweak the carriers and the bid, it'll change. It'll show you the dollars and cents impact um, on those decisions you made. So I want to switch gears on you just a little bit. We've talked. We've talked kind of from the shipper's perspective, which is all these advantages. But I know there's a big advantage for carriers. Uh, 
what are the advantages that companies get when you know if you're if I'm a small carrier or a mid-sized carrier? Well, it comes down to you know, small and mid-sized carriers now have the opportunity to bid on the largest um, Fortune 500 com- shippers uh, in the, the United the States. The good freight. <laughs> It's it's good it's good freight. It could fit a niche or an opportunity that they have to make more money. Um, you know, they may have never even known that that lane or that volume existed in the past, and now they're, you know, capitalizing on that. And it should also make the overall freight industry um, more more efficient. Yeah. So what if I'm a if I'm a carrier? What do I have to pay? Uh, what do I pay you guys to? Just, how, well, again, you said it before, you know, from a shipper aspect and a carrier aspect, our platform is free. You know, if, if you're a shipper, um, you have you have the ability to use our RF, dynamic RFP tool. Um, you can reach out to us at Emerge and we'd be glad to walk you through that. From a carrier side, you have to go through, uh, you know, compliance and an onboarding piece. Yeah, but, that's that's everywhere, know, though. <laughs> but that is everywhere. If you I'm just going to say that if you know you want to if you want to you know, partner with a shipper, they're going to ask you for, you know, your, your, your compliance and insurance and things of that nature. So how do you guys make money then? Well, we have a markup. Um, you know, if a carrier bids, um, we mark up that rate. Uh, you know, our, our going rate is 10%. And oh, that's, a, uh, that's, that is, that's, a, that's very fair. Very fair. Yep. 10%. So um, we monetize off of that. And then we also, um, you know, uh, you know, select lanes within the bid that are going to fit the emerge, um, you know, needs, um, you know, becomes an emerge becomes a carrier. And, so. and, and, I, and I don't mean this in any way that to be inappropriate, but this is all I kind of look at like when you're putting together shippers and carriers in this way. It's almost like ladies' night at a bar when I was young, <laughs> where it, ladies get in free, right? And then all the fellows will say, "I'll I'll stand in line to go meet <laughs> in there." And the, so the more more good freight you guys bring on, and I know you guys have a ton of it already, the more carriers you get coming to the platform, and the more carriers you get, the more <laughs> um, freight you get. You, you expect large shippers and large carriers to be here, and they are. You know. A story, a friend of a friend has three trucks and, and, you know, got someone asked me to help him out. And that carrier was in Texas and looking for to get back home and we're helping him. And I mean, it was kind of like a, a real life solution for a small carrier. I want to, I want to go kind of through an example, if you don't mind. So let's just say I'm a shipper. Um, and I'm here in the Detroit area, and I, I'm i uh, auto parts. I make auto parts aftermarket. And um, I, I, I spend about $10 million a year on transportation logistics. Um, so I say, I'm going to go, and I'm going to use Emerge. I, I've got all this stuff in Excel spreadsheets. I've been doing those. I work with some, some brokers, mostly carriers, like a lot of people. And now I say, I want to go to Emerge. I want to get, I want this process to be streamlined. So I what do I need to do? Take me through that process. Joe, if you're a shipper and you want to deal with a merge, work with a merge, um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can go to emergemarket.com and you can, you know, request it. You know, you get a call back from a, a sales salesperson. Um, and that, that salesperson is actually a, a more of an onboarding person. They'll teach you all, all the, everything you need to know about the, uh, about the platform, um, you'll be signed up, and you'll be signed up with uh, you know a matter of hours, assuming that we can get all that done. And then, what do I do? I've got my Excel spreadsheet. I just upload it. You've got your Excel spreadsheet. We recommend that you go through it with us the first couple of times. Um, you know, part of the onboarding. Shippers, you know, yeah, just part of the onboarding. I mean, to smooth out some of the speed bumps. And uh, but most folks, after one or two times, tell us that they have it and they can navigate themselves. And we just give them a point of contact if they have any problems to reach out to so them. Getting back to it, Joe's Auto Parts. I put my stuff up. I get so I got all my lanes in there. It's a ton of them. I spend a, a lot of money every year. Uh, I put all. So I want to bring. I want my incumbents to come over. So how do I? How do I tell my trucking companies to come on over? So. You know, you're you're gonna. There is a little bit of work to do. You know, in your account, 
And uh, when you upload, when you have your lanes ready, prior to that, you're gonna you're gonna put the contact information in for all of your carriers, and you're gonna tell your and then you're gonna you're we are gonna send a letter that um, email <laughs> that you and Emerge will write together out to your carriers and say that you're going to use Emerge to facilitate a bid. This will not be new to your carriers because your carriers have probably already gotten this letter multiple times. And we'll just let them know that they're going to get notifications on behalf of Joe's Auto Parts and that you would like um, them to bid on Joe's Auto Parts through the Emerge platform. But this is just a streamlined process. And again, there'll be some number of my Carriers that are all say, oh, I've already done bids on there. I'm already part of the, that platform. Exactly. And I, I think that, you know, it will be a significant number of your carriers, Joe. So so I I have a bid event and I want to pick. I, I pick within the system. I say, I want this guy, this guy, this guy. I pick for each lane and they get notifications. Yeah, they'll get notifications. They'll get a, a, a window. Um, you know, you will set the parameters of your bid. It opens on... Uh, Monday, September 26th, and it closes on, uh, you know, the, the first or second of October, uh, whatever, whatever your time frame is based on the size of your bid and what makes sense for you and give your, give your carriers enough time to, you know, see the bid, work on the bid and, and post a bid. And then once that bid closes, um, you know, It'll be closed to any other bids, and then you and your team will have the opportunity to go in there and select, you know, the the, the carriers that you want to represent that lane, and you will be, you know, you know, lane data rate, um, and how often that that's going to run, and you know, you can select that carrier, and hopefully, hopefully, you're yeah. You're and, and by the way, so I brought let's just say I brought ten carriers over for my lanes, which is great. I like these guys. I've been working with them. Well, let me better, better yet, but a few of them are letting me down lately. And so, uh, in addition, I get quotes from uh, emerges carriers. And so I say, oh, I didn't know I I could save two hundred bucks on this lane every every day. That's exactly what I want to happen. Okay, you to choose the emerge carrier. However, you have the opportunity to stick with your incumbent, and that's part of the scenario output. If you choose your incumbent for $200 more, it's going to tell you what that cost over the life of the bid. And that will be the decision that you make. Of course, I would like to see you choose the Emerge carrier and save the money, but there's nothing stopping you from sticking with your carrier. Well, that, and, and this gets back to, we talked a little bit about the visibility. I have visibility into who likes this lane. You know, these guys are bidding on all my, they love this lane. They love my Detroit to Dallas lane. And they're always, they're always bidding on anything I do Detroit to Dallas. And, like, and I look, I can look them up. I can see if they're a good carrier in your system and say, hey, why not give them a shot? These other guys, uh, I like them, but every once in a while they let me down. Yeah. Well, I think there's a threshold to you taking on new carriers, right? And that's what that's what we typically see. You know, you're not going to completely flip your bid and say the out the the old's out, the new's in, and and see how it works. But you may, um, you know, just you you may do that. Yeah. Well, and, and and again, let's just say I'm a carrier, and I say, uh, you know what? I'm I'm not, nobody's asked me to bid on anything within the emerge system. I'm thinking that's becoming increasingly rare. But let's just say I'm a little carrier, and I say, I heard Joe and Andy talk about this, and I want to get onto that system so I can start bidding on some work. What do they need to do to get in the system? Well, again, it's the same process. Reach out to um, emergemarket.com. Uh, put put an inc inquiry in and, you know, tell us what you're looking for and we will get that right over to our carrier relations group and someone will contact you with an onboarding packet and get you set up in, in the system. With that, we're also going to um, get some lane alerts set up for you. Maybe you like to run Detroit to Dallas and Dallas back to Detroit. So we're going to give you lane alerts when you want to see those lane alerts and as often as you want to see those lane alerts now you're going to control those so that you can turn them on or off or add to them and uh, then you can select the freight off of those alerts or you'll be you know you'll be in our platform to look for other freight. yeah and, and meanwhile i can look at some other other uh, 
I'll call it benchmarking data. I can take a I could take advantage of the fact that you guys got billions of dollars <laughs> under management, <laughs> and I'm just a th I just got three trucks. I don't have that kind of uh, visibility into market rates. You. You're going to see everything we have between Dallas and Detroit. If that's your, that's what see Dallas what it's and Detroit going for. Yep. Yeah. And if you know, if you want to expand your horizon, if you just want to go to, or you know, expand your lane, if you just want to go, you know, Detroit, Philadelphia, we can add that, or Detroit, Tampa, we can add that too. So, you know, whatever whatever your niche is and your and your scope is, we can we can design those, um, you know, alerts to to pop into your in, in, inbox. Yeah, what I like for the little trucking companies, um, well, all trucking companies, is access to the top freight. Um, there's really good freight, go you know, like we'll say the, the, the big retailers of the world, the big uh, manufacturers of the world. It's sometimes hard to get your foot in the door on that, especially if you say I'm an owner operator and I got five, 10 trucks. How do I get, I'm, I'm busy driving trucks. I'm busy managing trucks. I don't have time to chase down uh procurement people within the largest companies. Uh, but if they're already coming to emerge, I don't have to chase them down. No. And, you know, we've had small trucking companies tell us, wow, I never thought I'd get in with, you know, some of these large shippers and all of a sudden they're in the door and one truck, three trucks, five trucks pulling freight for, you know, some of the largest shippers in the United States. Not bad. Not bad. So anyway, I'm going to summarize some of this and then I want to get your final thoughts on the topic. So talking with my friend Andy Semish and we're talking about smart freight sourcing and really in particular in specifically we're talking about the Emerge RFP platform and again this is this is an addition to anything else you might have uh, you might have to say I have a TMS I have other tools for procure but this is a tool that is got billions and billions of dollars under management I don't know if you guys are saying what the actual numbers are but we talked about the flexibility of being able to do bids since the process is streamlined i can do multiple bids i can do most people probably aren't doing one a year anymore but they're doing quarterly or even for a season if it's i'm going to do a christmas bid i'm going to do a thanksgiving bid i'm going to do a cyber what do they call it cyber no what, what what's that what's that uh black monday cyber cyber monday right i heard somebody say black friday cyber monday now that and they, they were using that what is it BFCM. Somebody sent me a note about that. It, okay, I hadn't seen that. But, and I was like, uh, what is that uh, supposed uh, to mean? And I figured it out later yeah. on. It's Black Monday, Cyber, or Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So I could say, I'm just going to do a send out a bid for that. So I now have this as a shipper, I have this additional flexibility that I didn't have before because this process is streamlined. I can do bids as often as I need to. Have some carriers falling down, new bids, right? Also gives me visibility. I have visibility not only into the bid process, how that's going, that actual event, but also into all your benchmark data. Um, I have I have insights that I never had before. Um, you know, when you when you're getting information, you can say, "Oh, I know what the market's doing." No, you know what thirty carriers that bid on your stuff to, are doing. You don't have thousands of carriers that are uh, have bid on that, and it, and the system does. Um, we also get this this opportunity again. If you're a small carrier, you have opportunity that you wouldn't otherwise have. You can you work work with the best companies in the business, including Emerge. So we talked about volume, we talked about flexibility, visibility, and the opportunity, and we talked about what what what's the advantage to shippers, what's the advantage to uh, carriers. Final thoughts on this topic. <laughs> yeah, my my final thoughts are. You know, the business environment is changing tremendously, um, you know, from a from a supply chain issue, post pandemic problems, um, you know, inventory problems. We you need to be the shipper needs to be able to control the movement of their goods quickly. And the way they can do that is by, you know, using the emerge dynamic RFP tool, um, benchmarking and running multiple bids throughout the year that suit their business. Um, it provides flexibility. Um, it provides visibility to rates, like you said, and, you know, and, 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 you know, it keeps the, their, 
inventory moving timely um, without delay. Um, I love it. I love it. So uh, before you go, <laughs> who's the sweet spot for Emerge? I mean, I, I know you guys have um, grown like a weed. <laughs> and I know you have tons of freight going through your system every day. Some of it's some of you guys are moving, but a lot of it just goes through the um, um, just using the system. Uh, so who's the sweet spot? Who's coming over as a shipper? Significant amount of Fortune 500 company shippers are coming on a weekly basis over to Emerge. But who should be looking at coming over? The the folks that need to come over to us are the folks that are putting you know two months into a bid, and by the time they implement the bid, um, things have already significantly changed, and they wish they had you know done things differently because that's where the waste of time goes, additional expense, and uh, you know they're not getting the most effective race out of that bid. So the folks that aren't using you know a stream a tool should be coming over to emerge right i don't think it's a hard sell when you say hey would you like to go through that two month um nightmare of <laughs> populating excel spreadsheet and sending it to every every business card you have having 20 percent of those bounce <laughs> my recommendation is just try it just try, you know if you have 500 lanes take 100 give us a try and let's see Take take your worst performing lanes, the ones that are killing you right now. Take those ten, put them in the system, and and uh, if you like it, which you, which you probably will, you get some good carriers on those lanes, which carriers you would have not known. And uh, then next time when you say, you know what, maybe I'll go a little bigger, <laughs> put all my lanes in there. So that's that's from a shipper perspective. A lot of Fortune 500 companies, but you said anybody who's shipping, especially anybody who's struggling with this old clunky system. Well, it's hard to call it a system. If you're using Excel spreadsheets in 2022 to manage your lanes, you're doing something wrong. Um, who from a carrier perspective, who's, who's your sweet spot? Who, who works best with your, with your system? Well, all carriers work well with their system. Um, you know, it's all, you know, the larger the carrier, the more folks that they have working in our system. Um, but, I really think there's a huge opportunity for, you know, less than a hundred, less than 50 trucks for them to get exposure and make their network, their business more efficient and more profitable, more profitable. And, and the, and I know you guys work well with the big, big um, carriers. Everyone knows their name, right? So everybody who's doing a bid invites them, Hey, please bid on our freight. It's the little guys that, um, let's face it, they're kind of, they're a little bit of the backbone of this business, but we don't know, always know their name because they're too busy driving and they don't have very many trucks on the road and you don't know who they are. So there's an opportunity for those guys to come in and get freight that they would never have a shot at. Sure is. Yep. And and by the way, you guys are making money, which you said you, you're, you're getting that 10%. I think one of the things I hear from carriers all the time is, especially when the bar gets tough, is when they feel like, I'm doing all the work and I just went through some broker who's killing it and they made a thousand dollars on me. Um, and they want visibility into what, in, into what the rates are. So they say, I, I, I could have gotten $500 more and the broker didn't tell me if I'm a little carrier, I can see what that lane's going for in your system. So I know I'm not losing. And I know that emerge is uh, taking a small bite, not a huge bite. <laughs> exactly. Uh, before you go, what conferences are you guys going to? Do you go to every conference? <laughs> oh gosh, we are we we are. I, I think we're at just about every conference, at least the ones. Uh, Freight waves is coming up. Freight, I know you guys will be waves, down there. Uh, you know, we we have folks, leaders, leadership at just about every conference. We have a booth there. We're glad to answer your questions, uh, give you a quick demo. But really, the best way to get in touch with us if you want to do it quickly is to just check out our website and you're going to see white papers, podcasts, short videos on how our platform works. Well, that's that's right. I should have mentioned uh, um, when we were talking to Deborah offline. I know you guys have a podcast with Chris Jolly and um, George Abernathy. Yes, exactly. And that's uh, that, that podcast is called Awarded. So. 
Um, check. What I'll do is I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And so anybody wants to check out, and by the way, George Abernathy is uh, been there, done that, got the hat also. And uh, Chris Jolly is I've been on my podcast multiple times. He's He's the uh, he's the freight coach. He knows a lot, so he's get, he's bringing a really good perspective, also. So I'll put a link to Emerge, the website, and uh, any any white papers you want me to put out. Put a link to that. We'll put a uh, link to uh, the podcast too, so people can reach right. out and listen to yeah. that. George is great. He's been on my podcast. Yeah. I'd love to have him again. <laughs> I, I, I'll help you with that. And I would love to have you again. I, I'd love to come back. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Andy, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing all your expertise and what you guys are doing over at Emerge. Thanks, Joe. Had a great time. Yep. And thank all of you for listening to my podcast. Your support's very much appreciated. Until next time, onward and upward. You've been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage in conversation with experts in the logistics field. For more details, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com or follow Joe Lynch on LinkedIn.